Welcome back to another episode of the Game Time CT Staff Pick'ems Podcast. I'm your host, Pete Paguaga. And as always, I am joined by the Sean Patrick Bowley. Sean, how are we feeling today? Feeling, We're feeling better than I thought in this in this uh, week five. I, I was looking at the results coming through and I was just going, oh man, man, here I go. I'm sinking. But then I surprisingly look at the overall standings and I'm in the two-way tie for second place so i'm happy i mean yeah i saw you ahead of most guys it's only ahead of most of you guys i mean there's a bottleneck there at three or four i should say but uh so far so good yeah i saw you saturday at the new canaan st joe's game we were talking and i'm like yeah like if new canaan wins you're seven and three and you're like oh i thought i was five and five um it was a weird one though for sure a couple of games obviously going different but shout out to our guy joe morelli if you know Joe, as much as Joe says he doesn't care about where he finishes in these picks, Joe absolutely he cares about where he finishes cares in these picks. So much he cares. He so cares much. So, he he cares. He is agonizing over these picks, guys. You know. And he went nine and one. He won the week. He goes nine and one. Carl came in at eight and two. A bunch of seven and threes. A bunch of sixes and fours. The eight ball at the bottom goes went three and seven overall. Like you said, you're in second place. Uh, Dan Brecklin is in first place, up by two games. Then there is a bottleneck of people at thirty one and eighteen. Then it kind of starts to filter towards the bottom. Can I? Um, can I just say yes? How the heck, after the last two weeks, Pete, or last few weeks, are you still in the run? I mean, all I hear is just these disastrous picks. Yeah, yeah, Windsor. Of New Canaan, so, the last so, week you had a few. You had one. I, mean, I what, went. What happened? I went three six and four. seven. I went six and four last week. I went three and seven two weeks ago, but I went nine and one last. Week. Yeah. So I'm I'm having some really bad weeks, but then I'm having some really Beast good or famine. Weeks. Yes, Beast and or famine, and and shout out to North Haven football account for that lovely lovely video. Um, it was very funny. Just know I keep receipts too. Yeah, I was going to say, do you have Just some receipts? Know. I have receipts, and my receipts I will use at the opportune time. Shane, if you're gonna if you're gonna dish it, you're ready to take it. Uh, but no, shout out to them. That was a great win uh, overhand. That was one of the games I got wrong. And this is the thing. This is what I tell all the coaches: you don't want me to pick you. I am like the kiss of death on these picks. So. You, might, you want Bully to pick you. You don't want me to pick you. Um, and with that, we're going to dive into the week six games on the board. We got, there's a lot of buys again. So we got ECC, we got FCAC, we got Pequot, we got the SCC, we got the SWC, and we got a bunch of quote unquote at large games. Uh, CTC's on buy, CCC's on buy, uh, NVL's on buy. Um, so, you know, we're trying to spread the love. Some games on here that are not easy. That is done on purpose. Um, but uh, And a couple of games that could be first wins in a really long time. So I'm really excited to get to those. I mean, we picked the O'Brien Tech Vinyl Tech game last week. And Vinyl Tech won for the first time since 2019. Look at that. So that was kind of cool. I took O'Brien, but I took O'Brien. Didn't help <laughs> yeah, didn't help. But oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Great for VGW. All right, Sean, you ready to dive in? As always. All right, starting at the top, we are in the ECC. We got one and three Waterford going on the road to Ledger to face the fellow one and three team from the ECC. Uh, these are two programs that are normally in the mix. Yeah. Uh, playoff teams recently playoff teams um but clearly rebuilding years for them they actually both won their only game of the year in week two they're both on two game losing streaks um and the one thing that they have waterford beat montville ledyard lost to montville that's their one crossover of like common opponents um, Sean, I'm going to let you go first on this one. Who do you like? 
Pete, I'm going to go with Waterford on this one. Like you said, head-to-head, -head, they beat Montville and Ledger didn't. Also, Waterford's schedule is a lot tougher than Ledger. I mean, Ledger's only win was over Weaver, an ACC team, strangely enough. But Waterford lost to Notre Dame, 60-32. Stonington, which is looking very good, they only lost by a point, 34-33. Uh, Stonington's off to its best start in, geez, 20-plus years. Since Ledger, athletic director, was the head coach right. there. Right. And Fitch, obviously, is one of the best teams in the, in the ECC this year. It's 41-7. So, I just, the resume just says to me, Waterford, I could be wrong. Yeah. I'm going to agree with you. I'm going to go with Waterford as well. Stonington was actually a big uh, in that game. Waterford came all the way back. Stonington was able to pull it out at the end. This is just not Ledger year. They are rebuilding. I mean, you graduate a player like James Green. He's very hard to replace. I'm going to go with Waterford as well. Going down to the FCAC. We have Staples. Staples is 3-1. and one. We've talked about Staples a lot. They've been on the picks portion of the show before. They've had games against West Haven and Southington. And then you get to the other side. You get to Wilton, and you're like, Wilton's 4-0. We're getting crushed for not having Wilton in the top 10, but the coaches do. And then you look, Wilton's played Berlin, Norwalk, Platt, Fairfield, Ward. This yeah, is their I big know. test. This is their big test. This is a big test for Wilton. We've seen that they can play, that this program can play in these types of games. Okay? Staples team is going to come in. They're high-flying offense. Caleb Smith is having a great season. His brother... Is playing really well, kind of turning into his number one wide receiver, uh, which is really great. Staples had the comeback to beat Southington two weeks ago last year. So, you know, they played West Hill, you know, 49 nothing shutout. Um, he, this one is a little bit tough, and, and you know, I always get crushed by Staples because I always pick against them. Um, but I've also learned over the years not to pick against Wilton. Wilton has played some really good teams and won some really good games that have shocked us on this show. Oh, that said, Wilton hasn't beaten mm, anyone. I mean, well, I guess Berlin. Yeah, and they haven't beaten Staples since 2019, but they also haven't played Staples since 2019. They lost nine in a row since then, before then. So this is really tough. Um... Pick it, Pete. I I know, I know. I'm gonna I'm gonna pick Staples. I'm going with Staples. I think the Wreckers. I think they're just too good, and I think Wilton is gonna take their lumps at this portion of their schedule. Who do you got, Pete? I agonize over this one a little bit, and uh, despite my better instincts, we'll see who shows up at Fujitani Field. But I'm gonna go with Staples in this one. Caleb Smith and his brother Nate. Uh, it's been a great tandem right now and uh yeah, they beat southern up pretty good they i think they were back and forth of west haven but when west haven took it to him wilton doesn't have the type of playmakers like west haven does i like wilton the defense has been pretty good but i'd like to see something a little bit more out of them we shall see i'm gonna go with the records all right all right i can see it I can tell you right, will win that game too oh absolutely i mean we we sat on the show two years ago, picked, New, uh, picked Ridgefield with confidence. They beat them. Then we came back the next week, and we're like, that was cute. There's no way they're going to beat New Canaan. And then they beat New Canaan. So, sure enough. I wouldn't put anything past EJ and, that, and his coaching staff. All right, we're going to go to the Pequot. We have Windsor, Locks, Suffield, and East Granby. They are 1-3. They're going on the road to play Haddon Killingworth, who is 0-4. Um, not the greatest Pequot game to select. But, uh, Sean, I'll let you go first on this one. <laughs> Pete, I'm going with uh, Adam Killingworth in this one. Um, I know Windsor Locks, new coach, has had its troubles. It's at HK. I know HK has had its troubles as well. Um, but I just like HK more in this spot than Windsor. Windsor Locks got beat by uh, by Crick. Um, it's just not been really great for them. Uh, so I'm just going to go with HK. Just kind of, we'll see. HK. Yeah, I'm going to go with HK, too. Here's where I look. HK is 4-0. Scored 20 points in a loss. Also lost to Craig. Zero. They scored 14 points in a loss. They scored 19 points in a loss. Let's look at Windsor. Take away, uh, Windsor locks. Take away their 32 points against Coventry. 
two against Coggin Chuck, zero against Crack, six against Granby Canton. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with Adam Killingworth. They're going to put points up on the board. I don't know if you know this, but to win games, you have to score more than the other team. Yeah. So I'm going to go with HK. They as didn't, well. and they didn't. They 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 were 41. Crack, crack beat them. Good for Crack, man. They're they're off to a nice little yeah. start, but 41 zip. All right, going to the SCC. We got Lyman Hall strutting in here at the midway point with a four and one record and a very weird kind of like up until last week, all they've been involved in is shutouts. They got shut out in the opener, pitched three shutouts, and then beat Harding 27 to 16 on Friday. And on the flip side, you have Hillhouse who's one and three, but they're coming off a 20 to 14 win over previously unbeaten Guilford. Shout out to Walter Gibbs, SCSU guy, like myself, getting his first win. But funny enough, their win against Guilford looks a lot different when you compare it to Lyman Hall's 41-0 loss to Guilford to start the season. Now, I am of the mindset and the belief that teams can get better as the year goes on. Lyman Hall is not the same team that they were September 8th. But neither is Hill House. And Hill House beat Guilford by six. And I think was in control for most of that game. And I this isn't a crazy pick or anything like that. But I'm going with Hill House. They could hang with Guilford. Beat Guilford. Guilford beat Lyman Hall 41-0. Like, it's not like they beat him 14-13. It was 41-0. I'm taking Hill House with the utmost confidence. Pete, I'm joining you with that one. Let's take a look at Lyman Hall's schedule. Wilbur Cross, which cannot score, 35 0. You know, it's been tough for the for the Govs. East Catholic, another one. Really not has not had a good season. 31 0. Bassic. Traditionally, really tough, you know, tough program. In a bit of a dogfight with Harding, 27 16. Nice win. Hill House's defense, though, has been playing exceptionally well. Yeah, sure. They lost to Bristol Eastern, like, but it was 2 0. The so defense did its job in that game. You know, without the, without the Hill House defense, that would have been tough. They only lost to him, 17 0. I mean, granted, they didn't score, but Hand needed to fight and fight in that game. So, and then they come up with the Wilf Guilford win. I think we just got a little bit blindsided a bit on Hill House. Foreign, 37 12. That's the one outlier. I think maybe first game with the new coach maybe had something to do with it. Lyman well, Hall, if you really look at it, has not really shown you much. Maybe they show you something here. Who knows? But it, I think right now I, I, I'm i liking the academics. All right, all right. We're on the same page here. I wonder how the rest of the selectors will vote. All right, we're going to the SWC. Coming off their nice and relaxing bye week. Three and one. Actually, you know what? For either team, I don't think this was a nice and relaxing bye week. No. Because Joe Barlow went into the bye week 14-6 losers to Brookfield. Uh, three and one. They're going on the road to play Massick, who's also three and one. Uh, their loss, a 17-point loss to Bloomfield without their starting quarterback in the second half of that game. Sean, this is a big SWC game. Who do you like in this one? Massick has a quarterback issue. It's a freshman. Champagne, it's going to be good. Champagne's a good player. Jason obviously is an awesome caliber player. Their defense is very good. Against uh, against uh, Vanell, you know, that was a gutty performance for them to pull that game off. The offense couldn't score in the rain. Now, might be a little different this time. Massick, though, needs a guy to throw the ball. And, you know, hopefully maybe they're going to need a, they're going to need some big throws from the, from the freshman. You know, he really hasn't been really tested yet. Because you know there wasn't he wasn't in all the downs against uh, against Benell you know and, and he really didn't get it in there much uh, against uh, Bloomfield as they came back he needed to try and pull it out at the end that wasn't fair to him uh, this point but then I look at Barlow I'm like remember when he lose to Brookfield which I thought was going to be better I think Brookfield is better you know they did lose to Pomperog and everyone was scratching their head over that but Pomperog's actually better the SWC is not bad but. Uh, I'll say this much from Massick. Despite its issues, still coaches. 
I don't know what's going on over at Massac. I mean, we're going to wait the whole season with the coaching staff? Really? Anyway, it's what, week 15 or week 13, 14 that they've been out? Um, but that said, Barlow does not beat Massac ever. Even with last year's team. Did they even play? I don't even think they played. No, last year. they did not. They did not play last year. They did not play last year, but two years ago with Shaven there, you know, they, they didn't play him. I wish they had played him last year. It would have been a great game. But, but Barlow never beats Massac. At Massac, you know, I think the defense wins the day here. I'm going to go with the uh, Panthers. Okay. Since 2004, they have played 13 times. Joel yeah, Barlow is 0 and 13 against Massac. Over. And they did. They played in 2021, Danny Shaven's junior year. And it was 37 It was 34. a shootout. And it was a close game, only three. That was the closest it's been since 20... It's the closest ever since 2004. And the closest it had been since 2014. That said... That said, I'm going with Joel Barlow in this game. Here we go. Crazy uh, P pick number one. Crazy P is. pick number one. Look, Massick's offense... <laughs> first half against Bloomfield could not be stopped. Second half offense could not score. Lost the game. The Benell game that was in the rain, I had spies there. And by spies, I mean co-workers. And you guys said Massac had no business winning that game. And it's a torrential downpour, rain, you know, whatever. Benell, they made mistakes, whatever. Barlow is better than that. Hopefully it doesn't rain. I mean, at the odds, it's probably is going to pour. But I'm going to go with Barlow in this one. The Falcons snap the streak and go home winners from Monroe. Yeah. You need a crazy. You need one crazy pick. I'm not saying it's not crazy. Barlow's good. I think they'll be in it. It's going to be a good game. I mean, Matt clearly needs a some guy to throw the ball. But uh, you know, they need, to make, they need to make some big throws. But that defense man might be a little bit underrated. I know that Bloomfield scored a ton against him, but. Get, that's yeah. They don't throw. They're not throwing the ball around with Kerr brothers, Blue, uh, Barlow. So yeah, they're uh, running with about seventeen different guys. So pick your poison with them. All right, we're gonna move to a crossover game. We got two and two. Bullard, Havens, Kobe Cathedral. They're staying in town to play Basic. The lines are zero and four. This is a good matchup for both of these programs, a good out-of-conference matchup for Bullard to get out of the CTC. And for Basic, this is a good game. Um, you know, Desmond Lyman is the head coach at Basic, and Derek Lewis, the head coach at Bullard. The two were friends, former teammates at West Haven High, former teammates at yeah, Southern Connecticut them. State University. Sean covered them. Both. We've written stories about first the two year. of them and their friendship. Uh, so there's kind of a lot at stake at this game. Yeah, some bragging rights, but a win for Basic. Basic hasn't won a game in 749 days going into Thursday. Their last win came against Bridgeport Central on September 24th, 2021. This one, uh, Sean, do you go first or do I go first? I think I go first. I, I go first. I, you want? All right, all right. You go. No, you go. You go. You go. I'll go first. You know what? I, you know what Desmond Lyman has over uh, Derek Lewis that uh, you know, yeah, they're gonna love this. State, state Desmond, champion. Desmond Lyman has a state has a state championship. Uh, Derek was born uh, a year too year too early for that. Unfortunately, was not on that 2002 uh, West Haven team. So uh, tough tough guy. They're a couple of years too early. I think Desmond's two years behind. Him. But uh, yeah, I just remember Desmond Lyman was a big big factor on the line uh, in that uh, 2002 West Haven team. Uh, as for this, listen, uh, Derek and the, the the Tigers are one of the best teams in the CTC. They gave Northwest United a run, and they got Ben Roden. You know, that's a, that's a, not a bad job. They also, you know, they lost Pomp Rock, sure, but they beat O'Brien Tech, they beat Cheney Tech. That was another impressive one. I heard all about it from Derek. This time, I'm going with Derek and the Tigers. Uh, Stanley St. Victor is going to be the best player on the field. He's a one for yeah, I, I, Dez and I took um, math together in college. That's how far Dez and I go back. I was a freshman at the time. Um, and he's, you know, he's been at that basic job for a long time. And that says a lot about him. him. That says a lot about him as a coach. Tough job. 
It is not an easy place. Somebody's got to do it. No. But uh, I'm going to go with Bullard Havens as well. And you, you, you didn't steal my thunder, but I wanted to say Stanley St. Victor. Uh, I apologize for, for, for saying your name wrong. I think two weeks in a row. Um, but Stanley St. Victor is probably, like you said, going to be the best player on the field. He's one of the best players in the CTC. He is going to be a huge factor in this game for Bullard Havens. All right. Going to the FCAC. A Saturday night matinee, 2 o'clock. 4-0 Darien travels down to Greenwich to play the 4-0 Cardinals. Dun, dun, dun. We don't know a lot about Darien. We know they have four wins. They won one in a forfeit. They won one by inches. They won one in a torrential downpour, 10-2. And, um, and they won their last game. I don't know how, but... Then you got Greenwich on the other side, the number one team in the state uh, since the preseason defending double L champions have played, you could argue, a little bit harder of a schedule, uh, including a last second win over Maloney. Uh, I'm going to go first in this one. I'm not going to use the E word that's going to get me in trouble, but making this selection was quick. I'm going to pick Greenwich. I think they're the best team. I think we still don't know a lot about Darien. I'm not confident enough in them to make them, you know, to pick them to beat Greenwich in this game. I still think Greenwich is the best overall team in the state from top to bottom. They don't make many mistakes, uh, and they take advantage of them, so I'm going with Greenwich. Pete, I agree with you. Uh, Greenwich, number one. I vote number one. Why wouldn't I pick Greenwich against uh, Darien here? I mean, uh... But Darien over the years has had its way with Greenwich, and uh, I know the kids there are anxious to show us something. I mean, they had some weird games, like you said, you know. But the defense is there, so if they play some defense, I think they'll be in this. I think they will. Uh, but I do like, you know, just Greenwich overall. They got the confidence going. They know how to win. They've done it before. I'm going with the Cardinals, but I can't wait for that game. Yeah, I I think Darien's coming. And just, I don't think back. this is it. Yeah. They're All here. Right. I mean, I, Darian, I, I don't think Darian's going. I mean, Darian's going anywhere but the playoffs this year. So I know they got a yeah. while, while ago. I think they're going to be good. They're in good shape now. I think they'll be fine. So, uh, but yeah, they need to have this big confidence win. I think they'll, I'll think they show up. I'm taking Greenwich. Okay. All right. We're going to go to the SWC again. We got three and one Brookfield, who we just talked about. Uh, yeah. They're going to Campus Field to play Campus Field at Sacred Heart University to play Notre Dame Fairfield. And the four and zero Lancers, um, Brookfield. You want to talk about Brookfield? Uh, the only thing Sean wanted to talk about this preseason was how big Brookfield's offensive line was. Huge, he would text me. Boys. They're massive. All they got to do is run the ball. They're gigantic. Ba 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 ba. Well, here they are, sitting three and one. I called them a dark horse uh, in the preseason meat grinder podcast. Uh, I said that they were a uh, yeah. We both said that. I cl- I claimed them as my dark horse. You weren't allowed to claim them because I claimed them first. All right. But because we had to have different ones, if, if we agree on everything, the show's not as fun. Fair enough. <laughs> so they got Notre Dame Fairfield, who I really like this year. Petway, Razor, they got guys they can run the ball. They run the ball so well. Uh, I really like this Notre Dame Fairfield team. I liked them at the beginning of the season. I liked them last season. I think they kind of didn't have that great of a year last year. Uh, but Sean, you get to go first in this one, so I don't want to tip picks. Do you like do you like the big guys up front for Brookfield? Yeah, you know what? I'm going with Brookfield. Notre Dame Fair- crazy Notre Dame pick Fairfield. Of the day. Yeah, there's my one. I, I usually have one. Um, I know they're both scheduled. You look at I I can't I can't do transitive properties with both. I mean, Notre Dame Fairfield lost the Lewis. Sorry, they won uh, forfeit. Louisville is probably winning that game anyway. They beat Weston up 35 nothing. Weston's down. Waterford, ECC, the nah, 60 to 32. Okay. Beat New Fairfield. That's their signature win at this point, 28 to 6. Uh, but Brookfield also has a signature win. Pomp Rug's been very good. 20 to 12. They, uh, they lost, sorry, they, they lost the Pomp Rug, but they beat Barlow. That was their, that was their signature win. 14 to 6. They did beat, lose the Pomp Rug, but they've also played. That's a tough game for them. Played Bassick, 49 22, and then they beat the ATI, 29 zip. Uh, you know, I think new pound for pound, I think Notre Dame Fairfield's more proven. Uh, I think they're a playoff team. I think they're just due, you know, 
the one thing with with uh, and I'm not saying Brookfield is any any deeper than Notre Dame Fairfield, but if Notre Dame Fairfield, you know, their guys are going to be tired late in the game. I think Brookfield has a chance to kind of really wear them out here. Just use that offensive line, guys. Uh, I'm going with the Bobcats. All right, I'm going to go with the Lancers, and I think you make excellent points. I just don't think the depth is going to matter at the end of the game. I think Notre Fair Dame enough. is going to score that many points. Okay. So I'm going to go with the Lancers. Um, though I think I think this one has a you you and I have already trying to figure out who's going where, and I think we both want to go to Sacred Heart uh, on Friday night because it should be a good one. All right, we got two more. We're going to wrap up. This is an Alliance crossover game. We got Woodstock Academy two and two getting on the bus and going down to Milford to play the two and two foreign lions. This is a, this one's on the board cause it's an Alliance game and it's a big crossover and it was either this or East Catholic traveling 93 miles to play Middletown, Rhode Island. And, uh, we didn't have a, we didn't have a button for Middletown, Rhode Island. So I didn't put it on the board. Give me two minutes. I'll make one. Uh, <laughs> but you know, Woodstock's two and two foreign foreign's coming off a loss against Sheehan. But they allowed, you know, Brady, uh, uh, the Sheehan ru- running back to go for 307. Um, but SEC football is a little bit different. I'm going first on this one. I'm taking foreign. Uh, I love Woodstock Academy. Uh, Centaurs is a top, like, five mascot in the state. But um, the Lions are going to win this one. Pete, you know, I agree with you. I'm going to go with the Lions. Um, ECC versus the SEC. Mm-hmm. Uh, hasn't been great. The ACC has been tough in crossover games. I'm going to go with the Lions. Coming all the way down here, too. That's a trip and a half. I'm going with the, the Team Walker. Yeah. All right, last one, and it's an SEC game. We're staying in Milford. We got four and one hand going to play three and two Jonathan Law. Fun fact, last year, hand was in SEC Tier 1. And Law was in SEC Tier 3. Now, they're both in SEC Tier 2, and John Nider is playing college football at, at, at UConn. Um, I'm, I know it's not. I'm just going to go with Hand. I think Hand is really good. I vote them. They're on my ballot. I give them a top 15 vote. Uh, they beat Prep. I was at that game. Jack Shea has been playing really, really, really well for them under center. Uh, this one's easy for me. I'm going with Hand. Pete, I'm going with Hand, too. Uh, you know, I might be the kiss of death here, but uh, <laughs> like I was with Guilford, <laughs> saying they weren't going to lose until Thanksgiving. Now we're looking at hand. Law, Branford, Amity, Sheen, Guilford. Ah, Sheen game might be tough. Maybe, maybe Branford. Uh, but, uh, I, I, you know, maybe Law too. Who knows? But I'm just going to go with hand. They're going to be rolling into the playoffs. Yeah. I don't know we're only in midweek, mid, mid-season, I mean. Tigers yeah. all the way. At law, ah, what the heck? Go, go Tigers. Yeah, I'm going to agree on that one, like I said. All right, so that's it. That's it for the picks. Uh, whole board is up on the website uh, as of Thursday morning. Go listen to the meat grinder. We had Gary and Coach Andy Grant on, which was a really fun time. Uh, so make sure you shout us out at games. Tell us if we got anything wrong. Um, don't get mad at me if I get it wrong, though, because I usually get it wrong. Uh, but uh, but for Sean Patrick Bowley, I'm Pete Paguaga, and we will see you all out at the field this weekend. Peace!